Welcome. In this video, we're going to look at component four, producing and analyzing. So we're going to take a look at section A, question one. So if you've missed any of the previous videos or revision sessions, please check them out. They're all here on YouTube. If you like this content, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Show us your support. So the component four exam is all about the production. OK, so section A is five questions, 85 marks, and you will be doing lots and lots of production tasks. You'll be analyzing music, you'll be asking to correct things, you'll be importing music, and then you will be exporting it. Um, it's five questions, 85 marks. Section B is one question and it's worth 20 marks. And that is an essay based question based on some kind of recording scenario. But let's just focus in on question one and what you need for question one. So once again, these can come in any shape or form, but what tends to happen is question one will be the slightly easier one and it will lead you into the whole thing. Now, before you get started, remember you do need to set up your DAW. You do need to make sure you've got reliable headphones that have, have good sound in the left and the right speaker. So you have a full stereo field and to make sure that you have the full frequency range and volume needed. Um, once you've set that up, make sure you've got your folder set up. Make sure you save your work at the beginning of the exam. So question one tends to be slightly easier than all the others. It can be a mixture of question types. Um, it will mostly be around some kind of production question or mixing task. You will be asked to import a piece of audio, but that will normally happen before question one starts and then you'll use that first piece of audio. You'll also more than likely be expected to export that audio. And you'll know this, but there's normally a box at the bottom of the question that says export this now. Please keep in mind when they're asking you to export a specific piece of audio, normally it's just that audio on its own. Do not mix all the audio down together, otherwise you will not get the marks you want. So for the sample question, it's worth nine marks total. That could change. Um, based on how many questions or whatever, but the whole section itself is worth 85 marks. Remember, you have the full use of your DAW to complete this task. So if you're struggling to answer it and your DAW has something that could help you with this, you can look at it. So you can look at things like the anal analyzing charts or the, the levels or the panning charts just to help you fulfill what's needed for this um, particular question. So don't feel afraid to look around your DAW and find the answer. So um, in the sample question, which can be found on the Edexcel website, we have three questions that can be asked. So this is a, a multi-choice question and you're asked to identify the quantizing values. Now, the reason the quantizing one comes up quite a bit is because they want you to make sure that you've set up the quantized value properly. If you don't set it up properly at the beginning of this exam, you can lose loads and loads of marks as you go along. So you will need to pay careful attention to how it's quantizing. Make sure you've got your snap set appropriately. Um, and once again, look at how, how many marks each question is worth. So this particular question is worth one mark. So question two, this is quite a common one also. And once again, it's linked in very heavily to the quantizing state where you're asked to listen to a piece of audio. In this particular case, it's a drum part. And then you're asked to notate a bar of that drum part. It's not a bad thing to listen to audio and try to notate it, whether it be a chord pattern, whether it be a simple melody, or whether it be a simple bass pattern or a drum, a drum part. Um, get used to kind of going through that. So this one here is worth four marks. And then the final question here then is you're asked to correct something from the actual part. And this can be anything. So in this particular instance, you just have to remove a little bit of the EQ resonance. Um, once you've done that, you then have to export this particular um, question as Q1 and your candidate number. Now, make sure you get your region set up for this. So if it asks you to export between one second and 15 seconds, make sure you get your region set up so you do only export the right amount and make sure you're only exporting the channel that they're asking for.
So, how to prepare for this particular question? Now, question one for me is all about setting up your DAW and making sure you're comfortable. So, these questions will come up all the time and the more you prepare getting ready for, for this, the better. So, let's have a look. Here's the points I'm, I'm going to use. So, practice setting up your production folder. So, and some of my students, not a lot, but some of my students, when they're making their tracks for component one or component two, some of them don't understand where the production folder is. And they, they go inside of Logic and they press save and they, they save it to the Logic folder. They have no idea where that folder is. So what I'm going to ask you to do is set up a folder. So go into Logic or, or set up the folder initially. And then when you go into Logic and you do a save or a save as, make sure you direct it to the folder you've just set up. This is a really good practice to make sure that everything goes into the correct folder. You will need to put all of your work files in there. You will need to put all the audio files in there from the CD and all the MIDI files from the CD in there and all of your exports. I would also say that have a folder specifically for your exports, but that's not necessary if you don't want to do that. All based within that one production folder. Make sure you label it appropriately as well. So the next thing is practice setting up your DAW, including headphones um, and working from an a CD, an exam CD. So get get a past paper from your teacher, put it into your put it into your computer, download the audio MIDI file. Just get used to that process of getting information from a CD. And there's nothing worse than you come into the exam and you go, and actually, I don't know how to do this. Um, and at the moment, and I said this in a past video, my computers actually don't have CD drives on the side of them, so we have to use externals. So more and more, you do need to understand how you're going to get that information off of the CD. So practice doing that. Practice working with the files. Um, next thing then, practice importing MIDI files and audio files into your DAW. Um, make sure you save them in the folder that you've just set up. Practice exporting audio and MIDI files at 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz um, to that same folder or into an export folder depending on how you want to do that um, and again listen to listen to music listen to drum parts um, try notating them onto a piano part listen to bass um, simple bass patterns simple melodies and try notating them it's really good practice to get into because you could get this and it's more likely that you will be asked to notate something simple into a piano roll or something similar. Um, practice changing your quantized settings and becoming familiar with them and then finally use your DAW's um, analyzers to identify panning, frequency and level information. Get comfortable with having to do this because sometimes you will be asked to read from a graph um, and it's it's useful if you know how to read that graph just by practicing looking at it. And a lot of these a lot of these analyzers they have freeze functions. So if you want to see what it's actually doing, you can freeze it on a particular part, and it will give you the reading and all the measurements, which is really really useful. So that brings us to an end of this one. In the next video, we will be looking at question two. If you like this format and you want to support us, um, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you want more revision resources, head on over to musictechstudent.co.uk where we have absolutely loads for this. So I will see you in the next video.